Time to go on the hot seat. But first, footballguys.com is the website. I appreciate you joining us here every Wednesday at this time. Uh, also, Saturdays at noon Eastern time for the Ask Me Anything live streams. Hit the subscribe button, the notification bell, all the YouTube-ish things that I love you to do. And then when they're done, you're done uh, doing all that, hit the like button. And the know, you know, because we like to be liked. And uh, we've got no shortage of grist for the mill this week. Thanks, free agency. Uh, so, as usual, we have a great guest. And by great guests, you know, usually on this program, I have like a, you know, I mean, everyone comes on the show as a friend of the program, but today it's fantasy family. Uh, Jamie Calandro from Football Di- Football Diehards, a great colleague there, uh, and uh, now applying his trade at Fantasy Pros and uh, fantasy, team, fantasy Team Advice. Uh, so you can catch him there, catch him on Twitter at JAC3600 or X, if you will. Uh, appreciate everyone coming. Very kind of you. We always appreciate the visits. And uh, and we'll get it. Hi, Toronto, Dave and JSC. Good to see you all. Hi, Jamie. How are you? Are you muted or is it me? Yep, it's me. I'm already in the hat. This is the way. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's great to be out here. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be, you know, doing something with the football diehards, a family I've been with for three three years now so you know it's always nice to get to get with you guys and and uh and talk some football you guys are my favorites yeah and by you know by the way yeah i I know that you know football diehards will no longer continue on its website etc there the the site and the the magazines have been sold there will be people producing those i know emil's taking a little part in that uh to get the ball rolling so emil is doing well by the way everybody uh treatments are going well and uh maybe getting some good news uh, oh, no, JSC has got to come around to Keenan Allen. We'll get to that, young man. Royal Slade in the house. Hello, Royal Slade. John Bonneville in here. Jamie's starting out like the Jets, quiet at first in free agency, then dominating. We'll see about that. They, they have made some nice moves. We'll get to all that. Yeah. Jamie's, Jamie's Giants. I think, you know, the, the, yeah. the story that's kind of been the dominating theme this, you know, or the, the overriding storyline is the Pittsburgh situation, uh, starting with the quarterbacks. They bring in Russell Wilson. First, and I mean, I get it. Dirt cheap, you know, you're getting for $1.2 million. Uh, Kenny Pickett didn't like it. Uh, Mike Tomlin famously has said he wants volunteers, not hostages. The hostages have been released. And by hostages, I mean uh, Kenny Pickett and probably Deontay Johnson, we can probably safely say. Um, but let's talk about the quarterback situation. They acquired Justin Fields after they moved on from Kenny Pickett, who didn't like the fact that Russell Wilson was there and pretty much has been named the starter. What do you think? the odds are that Russell Wilson gets a full season as the starter in Pittsburgh this year. Um, well, I, that's, that, this is probably one of the toughest ones for me so far. I mean, the, the, the fields thing was confusing. I, I do think, you know, that people are saying he's going to be out by week three or four or something to be saying he's out by week eight. I, I think he's a better bet to play more more than half the games this year. Um, He's, I think he's got to really, really struggle or get hurt to turn it over to fields. You know, as much as people are pushing for fields already. Um, Yeah. I mean, the fact of the matter is, you know, this, this is an offense that is good for him. You know, I mean, we, we spent all last year dunking on Arthur Smith for what he did in Atlanta, but you know, he runs an offense that emphasizing emphasizes the run and efficiency and that, is something that Wilson is just going to be, it's just going to be music to his ears. I mean, he's a great game manager. We know that already. Um, You know, he's really playing without pressure right now, except for, you know, to prove that he still belongs in the NFL. So, I mean, I really think I'm, I'm worried about his receivers. You know, you said Deontay Johnson, so I don't really know know who he's going to pass to. They only replaced him with Van Jefferson, but Wilson really wasn't bad last year. You know, he was third in completion percentage, um, third in completion rate over expected. So I, I think Wilson is going to show some more this year than people are giving him credit for. So, like, I think that's possible. I know the thing that he's kind of been most notable for in the past has been his deep ball. You still see those moon shots connecting properly. Corlin Sutton had the 10 touchdowns last year. Uh, I mean, George Pickens, a volatile young man, uh, not going to be happy if he's not getting hit. Um, what are your thoughts on him, his value uh, as well uh, in this offense? And do they need another piece? Or Calvin Austin the third 
seems to be a guy that some of the local reporters are buzzing about a little bit, that maybe this opens up a role for him working in the slot with Deontay Johnson gone. They'll need another outside receiver power drop. And also, by the way, so I don't know if that's really uh, – really exciting, but, uh, but, but what are your thoughts on George Pickens? Where, where are you comfortable drafting him? Like? Uh, not at his ADP right now. Um, you know, I'm, I'm just kind of remembering that we've done a couple of best balls with you guys and I'm, I'm in like six others myself right now. We're seeing him um, kind of in the, you know, in the range of Terry McLaurin, Ridley, uh, DeAndre Hopkins, Jaden Reed. I, I guess that's fine. Um, you know, and I, I think his success is going to be tied with with whatever we get out of Wilson here. Um, and I'll say that, you know, Wilson is not bad for Pickens. Uh, you know, his his average depth of target was a career low last year. But I really don't know how much that is was the offense he was running or, you know, Peyton himself. I mean, Wilson was seventh in uh, rate of downfield passes last year among all quarterbacks. So I don't know. I mean, I think I think. <laughs> if they're willing to let him air it out to Pickens with Pickens you know, ability to catch those deep balls and really get separation. I, I like Pickens this year. Yeah. I think John Bongo makes a great point. And J- Russ Wilson getting Judy paid like, man, real money, <laughs> like real money. You know, we'll talk about a little bit about, about that. If we get to it uh, as well, uh, Toronto Dave has a good point. The conversation might get interesting when that sixth pick becomes solidified, depending on what happens to Justin Fields pick too. Um, so what is Justin Fields to you as you, you know, the Bears, maybe, you know, maybe they were doing right by him. Maybe they just felt like, man, we can't have him in the building when Caleb Williams shows up. I don't know. I feel like I would have held on to him a little longer and maybe seen if Satim found itself in a pinch. And and But clearly the NFL does not value Justin Fields the way fantasy Twitter values no. Justin Fields. No, not, 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 not near enough. Um of what they do you know i mean he's in fantasy points per game each of the last two seasons he's been a qb1 so you know like you say he's he's definitely fantasy gold but it just doesn't look like teams are are thinking that right now um maybe a fresh start if he gets a chance but i mean i don't think he can bank on that i mean his his value is kind of cratering to me i i've you know, I'm, I'm looking at my quarterback rankings right now. I got him, I got him down in at 19 now, and um, I have his his replacement one spot ahead of him in Chicago there. So I'm really, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think he's a safe pick this year. I don't think he's just going to come in because fantasy wants him to. JSE coming in with some bold uh, breakfast for dinner talk. We may get to that later. That's fantastic. Um, that is, the, I mean, <laughs> you, you can't you can't go wrong when you're doing breakfast for dinner. Uh, John Bonneville thinking Plan A was for Fields. I'm not sure that that's entirely wrong, right? Like we heard, Mike Tom was a big fan of him, and then they didn't like the price. Pivoted to Wilson. Makes sense. Um, <clears throat> feels like mal- malpractice not to play him over Wilson. We'll find out how that goes. Uh, now they're stuck with the promises to Wilson. Maybe so. Kenny Pickett, not stuck with those promises. Bears trying to say they had better offers for him, but they wanted to do right by him. That is not that is not a believable story. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna just go with that. I mean, I, there was a little talk, you know. I know Courtney Cronin from ESPN was reporting that you know the Bears were telling her this, and I saw some people like kind of ragging on Courtney Cronin a little bit. What she's supposed to do? Not tell us what the Bears told us? Do we not want to know what kind of liars they are? I'm looking for that yeah. kind of content. Uh, I mean, that's how all this works, right? I mean, like, I want the information. It's funny, Jamie, how we've kind of blurred the line, and I don't want to get too far astray here, between what a beat writer is and what our expectations were. When I got in this business in 1993, it's been a while, beat writers <laughs> were just that, right? I mean, they they reported nothing but facts. I think the fantasy community, the, the audience, pushed them into giving these opinions and turning them into – opinion people well sometimes they're just reporting the facts right and letting us know what's going on and i think that's the case with the, you know the bears look they had to put a spin on it it's not surprising that that's the spin they put on it also fair to say that we're all grown up adults and consider and say yeah that's a big fat lie right <laughs> but that's what i want so like in general team i feel like when you're listening to any story there's probably you're hearing five versions of various lies all with interspersed with the truth the more versions of that, those lies you get, the more pieces of the truth you can put together and kind of figure out what's going on. Uh, so sure. so I'll just go with that for right now. Talk a little bit, of, you know, Kenny Pickett enters the backup phase of his career. Is that safe to say, I think? Yeah, I, I do. Um, 
you know, that this, this kind of, I don't know if I want to paint the extreme of, um, you know, Arizona, but this, this feels a lot, <laughs> this feels a lot like, uh, Josh Rosen, you know, when, when right. they drafted him and, exactly. and, and, you know, and Kyler Murray was there. He's like, yeah, you know, you're not the guy. So, I mean, I, there are definitely worse backups, but I don't see any, and barring an injury to Hertz, I don't see any fantasy value for Pickett. It feels like the Cardinals open those floodgates. Like, right, like if you miss on that first top 10 quarterback, okay, moving on, we're good. You know, I mean, like just admit you know, admit the mistake, pull the Band-Aid off and move on. And I think that's part of that is you get these quarterbacks on their rookie contracts. That's the affordable portion of the whole affair. And you can make these moves. If you do that after the contract, after they get into their second contract, it's not as easy. Ask the Denver Broncos who have- Ask my Giants. Ask your Giants, exactly. So- a lot of that going on. Uh, Jamie started out like the, the quiet, but we saw that. I love that comment. Um, <laughs> so I do think that that's kind of the don't exactly right. Don't hate the reporter. Know the wires. That's the whole thing. Like I could, you know, if I want to handle a snake, I need to know how poisonous it is. Right. And that's why I want to hear, like, let everyone speak. Let everyone tell me exactly what they think and tell me exactly what they are. And I can make the uh, the appropriate judgments going forward to avoid getting killed or or making stupid mistakes in fantasy football. All the same. Uh, we'll move on to Chicago a little bit here. Uh, the Bears adding Keenan Allen, added DeAndre Swift. Keenan Allen, I know there's been some comments in here. Uh, you know, I, who was it? I think it was JSC mentioned. He thinks Keenan Allen is going to be the best. Right now, the ADP tells you that DJ Moore is still like right at that wide receiver one, two turn. Keenan Allen's been going as wide receiver 30 something, 37 in best ball, 36, 35, somewhere right around that wide receiver three, four turn. Um, I think he'll rise now that we have some clarity on a situation or some certainty. Should he be taken ahead of DJ Moore? Is he the better player? Last year through the, what, 13 games that he played, he was what, wide receiver two? Yeah. And, uh, you know, third in points per game, um, third in target share. Um, I, 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 the thing with him is, you know, I mean, you have to, Caleb Williams has to be good right away. I think for him to, to maintain that sort of value. So I don't know, I'm kind of, I'm rising him a little bit, but I'm also dropping DJ Moore a little bit. I, I wouldn't take, I wouldn't take Keenan Allen over DJ Moore just yet. I mean, you said, where did you say that right at that kind of wide receiver, 10, 11, 12 range. Yeah, that's kind of where I've been seeing him go. Let's see if there's been any movement in the last day or two since this news came out. That you know, and that's the great thing about best ball. You get that instant reaction. He's still wide receiver nine on best ball tens. Uh, I want to say right in that same range and underdog from what I recall. He's down to wide receiver eleven, but that's about right. Same same kind of range. And Keenan Allen's been going kind of as a wide receiver three in most of these drafts. I do think that's been like a combination of the uncertainty. He's wide receiver twenty seven right now on underdog. Uh, I want to say wide receiver 22. So he's kind of rise. He's risen a little bit in uh, best ball tents for sure uh, over the last few days. But I think most of that was either a, the uncertainty of will he be in Los Angeles and also the fear that yes, he will be in Los Angeles and, and we don't know what the hell's going on there with all this, uh, you know, run heavy expectation, maybe overblown, <laughs> but that's definitely the expectation. Yeah. Um, and and I, I guess my answer to the question with the Bears receivers is that, you know, it'd be if they stay separate uh, as far as their, you know, wide receiver rankings or ADP goes. I mean, give me Keenan Allen at a discount because I think they're going to be closer than, you know, they are right now in, in production. Um, you know, I love I love Keenan Allen as my wide receiver three. I'm a little uneasy about DJ Moore as my wide receiver <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah, you know, if I. If, if we're going to keep getting, we're not going to keep getting Keaton Allen at wide receiver yeah. three prices. You already seen him rising up. And he was, I saw, I don't know if anyone else watched the uh, pro day today for Caleb Williams. I did. It turns out he can throw the ball really well. Yeah. I, I think that people are unnecessarily down on him. I mean, he's, he's the number one pick. He should be the number one pick. There's no question that he's going to be the number one pick. I bet on him to be the best quarterback of the class. I mean, there's, there's really not a, <laughs> I'm not second guessing that one. Yeah, I, I think like with Keenan Allen, I mean, the case is if, many times you'll hear us talk about on this very live stream or on the Sirius XM radio program, Football Diehards, that we like the cheaper piece. If there's a, you know, mm -hmm. DJ Moore and Keenan Allen, if one's cheaper, we're going to go for the cheaper piece because we think they're both very good. Uh, I think that we'll all have a lot of Keenan Allen if that's the case. And if DJ Moore gets cheaper, 
don't have a lot of keys anymore because that's how I am cheap. Yeah. Uh, and I think I think that's a fair way to go. Uh, so DeAndre Swift, is this the right place for him, or did he just get really super fortuitous timing? Uh, having his healthy season, I mean, it just it seems like this might have been a little bit of a reach for me for the Bears. Yeah, I think so. Um, I think the one thing that'll benefit DeAndre Swift in Chicago rather than Philadelphia is is um, red zone carries. You know, he's not going to give up the the tush push there like he did with in Philadelphia. Um, you know, I mean, the one good another good thing he's got going for him is that um, Chicago had the the Chicago offensive line created um, more rush uh, the most rush yards before contact, so he's got that going for him as well. Um, you know, it, other than that though, it, it's, I think it was a bit of a, I think that was a bit of a jump in the gun. There's a, there's a couple of running back signings that, that I was questionable on. And that, that was, that was one of them to me, but I, I do think, I do think his opportunity will be better in Chicago than it was in Philadelphia. We'll get into some of those other running back signings. Khalil Herbert, I think maybe the overlooked piece, he's been a very good runner yeah. when he's been, had opportunities. I don't know if, you know, if that's going to change, I see uh, we have a bold prediction from John Bonneville. I, I mean, they're going to land a running back in the draft. This would still probably be a wise move. They just signed Rico Dowell yesterday, re-signed Rico Dowell. He becomes the most experienced back in the room, and zero of their backs have started a game in the NFL as of right now, the Dallas Cowboys. So <clears throat> they're going to do something in the draft, but I think you know adding a veteran makes perfect sense as well. And I did yeah. notice I didn't, I didn't notice the scampers. Uh, teammates love him. Also, Keenan Allen, as, as John mentioned, was there. Caleb had really great things to say about him, like all the right things, like, hey, I'm going to learn a lot from this guy. And I mean, I, you know, I, I don't think it was just lip service. I think he really would appreciate working with him. So a uh, good move there. Um, I guess the Bears, it's a little talking here. The Bears are going to be very good this year. Maybe they will. We will see. Shane Waldron comes in as the offensive coordinator. Similar kind of, you know, the McVay tree, just kind of a different limb or a different twig or branch, I guess, if I'm being <laughs> not so rude. Um, so let's talk about the big move uh, so far for the most part. You know, Kirk Cousins was the move we all anticipated. If there was going to be a move, Atlanta seemed like the, the most likely landing spot. I was kind of hoping for Minnesota. My dynasty shares of Justin Jefferson would have <laughs> loved that. Uh, but here we have him in Atlanta. Will he cure all the ills that the Falcons have suffered, or will they, he and the combination of Arthur Smith's departure? Well, I, I think he'll cure the uh, will for us fantasy players. I think that he will. You know, I mean, the the <laughs> we're uh, you know Pitts London and Bijan Robinson really were not really were not bad at all, and they haven't been bad. You know, they've all underwhelmed compared to their draft capital, um, you know, and, and how much of that can we blame on their quarterback performance and, and their offensive play, uh, you know, their offensive play calling, I think a lot. So, I mean, I think Kirk cousins being such a big quarterback upgrade is going to make us be happy finally with what we're going to get, you know, the ceiling that we want out of those guys from a football standpoint. I don't think it Kirk cousin turns the Falcons into a, <laughs> a Super Bowl contender, you know, I mean, they, they, they still don't take the ball away on defense. They still can't stop the run. Um, they haven't, we'll see what they do in the draft, but they haven't made any free agent signings on that side of the ball that matter at all. And they don't have the cap space too. So, right. um, you know, I mean, I think they're going to win the South now. I, I'd be pretty confident betting that, but I don't, I don't know if they can football wise go past that. All right, if you just dialed up, it's Jamie Calandro you know, from <laughs> Fantasy Pros. You know, and for football diehards, uh, he did great work for us for the last few years. We've been working in the magazine, the website, on the videos. Happy to have him here. You'll find most of his work now. Fantasy Pros, most of the writing, written work now. Jamie, is that correct? Yeah, yeah. The, any 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 content right now is over at Fantasy Pros, and then Fantasy Team Advice. I'm I'm doing the you know DFS NBA um, nice. full time over, full time over there now. You know with cores and running the our optimizers and the kind of technical stuff over there. Yeah, hit him on the X machine at JAC thirty six hundred three six zero zero. 
Get him there. I'm Bob Harris, by the way. I'm a football guy. You can find my <laughs> weekly notebook there. They put it out every Monday. Also doing instant reactions, tons of other stuff, more stuff coming. Uh, so watch for all that. And also on Sirius XM Fantasy Sports Radio. Right now we're on Saturdays at 3 p.m. Eastern time. So catch that there for two hours every week. That's going to ramp up soon enough, probably starting with the draft. In fact, I know starting with the draft. So uh, be ready for that. And also be ready for some other moves in the NFL. Marquise Brown. Uh, I mean, we've all been waiting for the Chiefs to get this wide receiving piece that's going to totally unlock all the other pieces and make everything fantastic. Also, they just won the Super Bowl. Things are relatively fantastic as it is, just from a you know from a team perspective, NFL perspective. But it's been lacking. The offense was lacking uh, last year from a fantasy perspective. Does Marquise Brown fix some of that? Yeah, I th- this this to me is one of the more underrated signings of any of the team, any of the free agency moves so far. You know, I mean, the the immediate reaction. I always like to take to Twitter as soon as as soon as one of these big moves I come out to see what people are saying about them. And you know, a lot of it was defending Rashi Rice to the to the death there, which I get. Um, and, and and you know, don't get me wrong, Rice is great, but you know, people have forgotten that Marquise Brown is still only twenty six years old. And um, the the um, you know the deep ball guy he's replacing there is Marquez Valdez Scantling, who had the third worst air yards conversion rate in the NFL. Um, and Justin Watson, who was the other one that was you know kind of their um, air yards per target guy, was was also in the in the bottom ten percent. So you know this looks like he's going to step in and he's going to be the first real downfield threat they've had since Tyree kill. Um, I, Rasheed Rice and Travis Kelsey are still going to get their, you know, they're still going to get their stuff. Um, But I mean, the high quality targets that he's going to see from Mahomes as compared to Kyler Murray, who is one of the NFL's worst downfield passers, I think is going to, I, I have so much Marquise Brown right now where he's getting drafted early on. Yeah, I'm landing him as well. And I think Rasheed Rice has been going a little higher than I was comfortable with before. I think this might knock him down a little bit. And look, this doesn't preclude him from being fantastic. Maybe makes him better. Maybe adds instead of subtracts. Sometimes that's how it works. Certainly can't hurt Travis Kelsey uh, to have the middle of the field unclogged a little bit as well. So a lot to like here. I still wonder, JB, how much we're worried, you know, like how much is Travis Kelsey's season last year? I wonder if he was ever really healthy, right? He hyperextended the knee, or at least that's what they would like us to believe happened. Like if, if at some point in the next few weeks I hear, oh, Travis Kelsey missing the start of OTAs because he had a cleanup or something, well, like would that be totally shocking? I'm not saying that happened, but I mean, just like some of the players that, you know, maybe we can say the same with Kyle Pitts, who was coming off the previous year's MCL, but said he was never quite healthy. I think some of these injuries take a little longer than we think, or at least for these super high-end players. So Maybe that's a little bit of what we're seeing. Mike Williams coming off a big injury, an ACL, suffered early last season. He will play for the New York Jets. Says he'll be ready week one. Um, what does he do for this offense? I, I, I'm I'm terrified for that guy on the MetLife. MetLife, <laughs> right? MetLife tariff. <laughs> um, Rogers too, for that matter. Again, but yeah, I mean, you know, as long as he's healthy, he's he before he got hurt again, he was wide receiver fifteen. So I mean, he's still. He's still as productive as anything. He's going to be 30 years old. Um, I, I think, you know, he, he can slide in as a much better number two behind Garrett Wilson, like way better than anything else they've, they've had so far. Um, and the, and the, the quarterback, the quarterback upgrade theoretically there too. I mean, he's a, you know, he's a downfield threat on the outside for, for Aaron Rodgers, who is, who is one of the more accurate passers in NFL history. So, I mean, I'm I'm curious to see what people value him at as as the off season goes along. But yeah, I'm uh, he's kind of a he's kind of a low risk, high reward right now where he's going. You know, with with uh, he's kind of next to some of the rookies. Um, um, I saw Jacoby Myers and right. Josh Downs. I I, t- I take him. I take him over them. Yeah, I think I would as well. JSD is getting a little yang- ants- angsty here about the uh, we're missing his <laughs> question. Uh, Brandon Ayuk and Debo Samuel, they are going close. Look. Brandon Ayuk, a lot of a lot of a lot of whispers and a lot of noise out there that maybe they'll get traded. I don't think that's going to be the case. At least the people who cover the 49ers are pretty sure that won't be the case. But look, crazier things have happened. He does look exactly like Mike Tomlin, and they do have a need. So 
there's that. Uh, who, which, which of these guys are you drafting? Is this an easy case of this of the cheaper piece, or is there one you prefer since they are so closely priced? You have a clear cut preference. No, I, I'm and and I I follow what you and Mike do with that all the time. It's you know oh, the the cheaper piece in that offense usually, but I, I am all team Ayuk here. Um, he is his efficiency is right. bananas right now, and um, you know given that Debo Samuel scored more fantasy points above expectation than any other wide receiver. That means more touchdown regression, um, you know, and expected points per game. He was a wide receiver three. Um, and, you know, Ayuk is a wide receiver one across the board. I actually think Debo is being overdrafted. So that's actually an easy call for me. Yeah, I, I'm I'm kind of with you as well. I, I'm, I'm keen on Ayuk. I, I know that it seems like he's not all that. But I mean, when you do, when you look at the numbers, mm-hmm. like last year, I was examining the some of the advanced analytics and those things, man, it's all pretty remarkable. And Debo seems a little more hit or miss even to me. Uh, so, so, uh, Bonneville has no mercy. <laughs> Al Lazar will look great. in these <laughs> Mike Williams or Curtis Samuel, Curtis Samuel has a new deal and a new home. Uh, how do we feel about him moving on to Buffalo? Good. Um, that's, that's a tough question. Um, as far, I mean, I guess, <laughs> I guess that's what you're looking for. I mean, he's, I think he's got a really nice sleeper appeal for the bills um, as, as a late, you know, a late wide receiver. Um, you know, he still though, he looks like on that, on that offense, he's <laughs> still going to be the wide receiver three at best, um, you know, yeah, four more point. realistically. So I'd take Williams. Yeah, I think that's it. I'm going to go ahead and go with Williams. Uh, we're just, you know, while we're before we get off that subject and get into some other cities and places, I, I don't think he's a wide receiver two. I think he's a wide receiver three. I know my buddy Jeff Bell at Football Guys thinks, you know, that that they have other guys that are like maybe a little more likely to play the Gabe Davis role, and maybe it's even Matt Collins for they decide, or at least the you know the body type and the the kind of physical play that he. He exhibits so but well, that doesn't mean, even as the wide receiver three that doesn't mean he won't be more productive than whoever the wide receiver two is i also imagine that i you never know right. when the draft goes but i mean they've got to be their top target position yeah. right now in this draft especially with this class yeah jesse by the way avoiding uh the ipdvo because of their ab adp <laughs> and the uncertain target share um i don't know if i'm avoiding them but but i don't know i'm avoiding Devo. i tend to avoid like not avoid i just there are other players I like at that price a lot better than him. And yes, Mel, there, there will be, I think, a pro forecast this year. The work is ongoing on it. I will not be part of it for the first time in like 30 years. But um, <clears throat> things change. People buy things and they move on. Alan Lazard, Curtis Samuel. All right, we're all caught up on the comments. Let's go on to Calvin Ridley and get to generate some more exciting comments here. Calvin Ridley. So uh, Tennessee did not want to play, what, 25-year-old uh, A.J. Brown, $100 million. <laughs> So instead, they decide to wait and pay 29-year-old Calvin Ridley $100 million. Uh, how do you feel about this move, Jamie? <laughs> well, I got cooked on, tw- on Twitter for that comment. Um, I, fair, fair warning, if you if you did that to me on Twitter, yes, I know it's a different front office. But still, you Maybe know, I mean. Maybe that's why it's a different front office. <laughs> yes, <No>. yes. <laughs> um, you know, if if this front office is trying to rectify that mistake, I think. They're going about it the wrong way. Um, Ridley, Ridley, to me, my interest level in him is going to be um, based on ADP. You know, I'm going to be watching that one um, very, very closely as this offseason goes around. Um, Ridley, I think, is going to frustrate. He's going to have those spiked weeks. Um, I think that. Brian Callahan being the head coach is good for him because he's notably pass heavy and which is a big difference as what they've, what they've been, especially now losing Derek Henry. Um, But I don't, I don't think that him or Hopkins is going to be anything but like a really concentrated target share the same way at each other. Um, So I don't know. I mean that this, this will probably be for them. Who's the cheaper guy and are they cheap enough? but I'm not super excited <laughs> about 31, either one. 31 and 36 respectively on uh, best ball pens and underdog right now uh, for Calvin Ridley. And I mean, 
Like, again, do I really even want the cheaper pieces there? There, Will Levis is their quarterback. I don't know how much faith I have in him outside of some spike games. That You know, look, DeAndre Hopkins, maybe you have another four-touchdown game, sure. Uh, but it's a good, and that's great for best ball right now, and that's where we're drafting. But I think for redraft, I'm going to be a little worried. JFC not touching that uh, Tennessee offense with a 10 football. We'll get into a little more of that. Maybe we'll do that right now. Ridley, I am watching on ADP. Andrea says as well, and I think that's, you know, that's going to be the key here. Do I, you know, like I had some shares, pre-Ridley shares of Traylon Burks because he was basically a free square play at some point. Can he turn into the A.J. Brown clone that we were all sold? Uh, probably not. Mr. Scampers, probably not. But at the, you know, at the 20th round, eh, I can probably live with that. I'll be more out on Ridley and maybe in on Levis. We will see how in people are. He's going very, you know, he's going very late. There's a lot of quarterbacks available late that I'm willing to take a chance on. He is probably one of them. Um, but I have to like be waiting very late and, you know, have a really solid guy ahead of him. And that's usually what happens, Jamie, for me at this point, if I draft quarterback into double digit rounds, I get someone I'm really comfortable with who I feel is like, you know, not a super high end play, but I tend to feel comfortable and I'll take a chance maybe on the later guy, maybe grab a Caleb Williams, although he's going a little earlier than uh, will love us at this point. Can't trust anybody that puts mayo in his coffee. Let me tell you something. Okay, I can't tell you anything. About <laughs> I can't. I can't spin that positive. I'll come off like the Bears, uh, saying they were doing right by Caleb Williams, and you'll all know I'm a big fat liar. Uh, so I'll be avoiding that. So the other move in Tennessee, Tony Pollard joins the team. Derek Henry moves on to the beloved Baltimore Ravens, or my now beloved Baltimore Ravens, because hell, that's where we all wanted Derek Henry to go. But let's talk about the move for Tony Pollard joining Calvin Ridley in Tennessee. Joining Ty J Spears in Tennessee, running behind one of the worst run blocking offensive lines in football last year. Bill Callahan, do your magic, sir. I don't know if you're that magical. Um, how do you feel about this running back move? Not good. This is this is one of the ones I was alluding to before that I just was a head scratcher for me. Um, you know, I mean, we saw last year when they tried to make Dallas tried to make Pollard the the main guy that that's not his that's not his thing. He fits best in that rotational role, you know, where you can get him in space and maximize his his running and his receiving ability. So I figured in this free agency that, you know, Dallas was either going to bring back another power back and use him as the complement or he'd go somewhere to a team that would that would do that as well. But I mean, the Titans, you know, that they already have their guy that's like that with with Spears. So I don't really know what they're going to do in this situation. I mean, neither one of these guys to me profiles as that running back with the, you know, the downhill power and, and, and the goal line, you know, push that, <laughs> that you want in a running back. So I don't know. It seems like they have two high, high level rotational backs without, without <laughs> a feature back there. So I don't know. I'm confused about that. And I'm kind of away from both of them uh, right now. Yeah, I don't feel great about either of them. I had some shares of Ty J. Spears prior. Felt pretty certain that Derrick Henry would be moving on. Thought they might add somebody, but there were some really good, you know, some, I mean, Red Carthon had some really good things to say about Ty J. Spears. And so uh, this kind of, you know, obviously clouds the, the picture a little bit. The, the current ADP right now, I think for Spears has dropped off a fair amount. I want to say he's down to 22. They're 21 and 22 respectively. Uh, Pollard one ahead of Spears. I don't think either of them is a great value at that point. Maybe depends on how your draft is playing out, whether you actually invest at those prices. I'll be waiting. Andrea likes Spears. I do too. I mean, I thought he was in a good spot. Uh, by the way, the offensive line on the left side, pretty sexy though. We'll see. And they will. I'm almost certain they will draft somebody. And look, I was joking about, you know, Bill Callahan, Brian's uh, father, uh, but one of the best offensive line coaches in all the NFL was allowed to move on from Cleveland to Tennessee. He'll make a difference, right? I mean, we saw him cobble together. The Browns had some injuries last year, didn't seem to fall off much at all. So, uh, so there is some hope there, I think. And, and, and I, I do think that was a good move for them. Let's talk about the biggest move uh, at Jamie Calandro's house. Uh, Saquon Barkley going yeah. to dominate in Philly. Uh, so I yeah. didn't mean to spring it on you like that. Uh, <laughs> according to uh, Saquon's daughter, he now has a chance to win games. So congratulations uh. to him on that. And yes, I'll stop rubbing it in and let you expand on your thoughts on the move. Uh, Saquon Barkley to the Philadelphia Eagles. Yeah, I mean... 
I, all I've done, all I've done in the last two weeks is search for negatives as to why, why this is going to be a bad move for him. And, you know, I hope that Jalen Hurts gets 25 rushing touchdowns from the one yard line. But yeah, you know, I mean, it, it's, it, he's going to be running by such an improvement of an offensive line here. Um, you know, they created the the fifth most uh, yards before contact in the NFL and, um, <clears throat> the team's ranked 31st in run stuffs against them. So, you know, I mean, I don't really see how, how he's not, you know, he doesn't put up, put up numbers that are not what we've seen the last few years. I mean, you know, there are some negatives. There is the, of course, hurts getting the touchdown, uh, equity over him that the giants didn't do. Um, Philly, Philadelphia don't, doesn't pass to the running backs. Um, you know, I mean, Hertz only averaged he averaged under four screen passes per game last year. So, I mean, there's that. So, I'm, you know, I, I, honestly, it didn't move the needle too much for me. I was kind of taking him at the turn, you know, a little bit early in the second round there. Um, I think if you pushed him into the end of the first round, I wouldn't argue it. But it's not, you know, it's not something that I'm really looking to to boost him above some of the running backs that I had him um, I had him behind before. All right, that's fair enough. And so, like, they did throw, they did throw to the running backs. So, I mean, there were targets there last year. Um, I don't know. I feel like this is probably an upgrade for him. Running behind that offensive line alone feels like an upgrade. But I don't know if the role is going to be as much of an upgrade as maybe I would like. But what the hell? Uh, Saquon Barkley is very happy where he is. I'm quite sure they not only paid him, but he goes to a division rival who is better than his old team, and he will be allowed to pummel them twice annually. And I apologize for that remark, Jamie. I felt very cool. Um, <laughs> hey, hey, we, we are looking good on defense, at least. It's just, you know, <laughs> I'm uh, not sure we're going to score more than 10 points a game yet, but... What did you score last year? 11? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> um, so how do you feel about the Devin Singletary move? He's obviously out in Houston with Joe Mixon going there. We'll talk about that a little bit. Uh, how do you feel about the uh, that move there? I have nothing against Devin Singletary. You know, he was he was quite, quite good <laughs> for Houston last year. I he mean, was. you know, um, he also proved that he could be a workhorse back, you know, yeah, I mean, uh, from week nine on, he averaged, uh, he averaged 19 and a half touches per game. Um, and you know, a, a shade under 90 total yards, which is, which is good. I mean, um, he was kind of middle of the pack and in, in, in missed tackles. I think he's fine, you know, for fantasy purposes, he's fine there. Um, he's, he'll be fine for, you notice I'm saying fine a lot. <laughs> um, you know, there's just nothing, there's nothing exciting about it. I mean, you know, I'm just kind of looking at the fact that Aaron Jones got a one-year deal for 7 million and, you know, Joe, Joe Mixon got a three-year deal for not a whole lot more than Singletary. Derrick Henry was a two-year deal. I, you know, I really would have just rather had one of them who would can kind of offer some upside and some explosion there, but yeah, you know, Singletary's fine. <laughs> yeah. I like, you know, I, he was okay in Buffalo. He was better. I thought the down stretching Houston, uh, we'll see how that plays out. Let's see. There is comment in here. Let's get his sniper. Mel loves Josh Jacobs in green Bay. <clears throat> I think I do too. Mostly because they're Aaron Jones is gone. They, AJ Dillon comes back. I don't think he's there to cut into Josh Jacobs workload. This looks like a super clear path. Uh, to a heavy workload. I think Matt LaFleur has wanted to run the ball more effectively. Uh, do you think you'll be able to do that with Josh Jacobs? Yeah. Yeah. I think that was a great, um, a great spot for him, for him to fall there. Um, you know, I, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of in on green Bay in general this year. This is a running back with an elite role that doesn't really leave worse situation a uh, better situation for a worse one here like you know you're right Aaron Jones is gone AJ Dillon even if he does return is not a threat like you said to Jacobs um and I, I don't I, Green Bay is I this is my first I don't know how bold it is but I think Green Bay is the NFC North team this year not the not the up and coming Detroit Lions that everybody loves I think they're going to be right there but I think Green Bay wins that north um and I am going to probably put a Super Bowl bet on them. Um, I haven't looked at the odds yet of that, but right now, I mean, I think they've got all the pieces there and it's now an upgrade at running back. And he's, he, 
he's proven capable in the passing game too. You know, we didn't think. Yes. That first, better, but... better than people think. Right. I, yep. I think it's kind of been overlooked. So as sniper Mel with his Packers logo is, lo has eaten this up. <laughs> right. He's right loving paid, it, man. He paid me nothing to it. say that. <laughs> She's loving it. Yes. She's <laughs> And by the way, JSC. Yes. I can read your stuff. Let me get to it in my own damn time, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, so I, like I, the other side of that coin is, uh, the Aaron Jones moved to Minnesota. This seems like a great landing spot for him as well. What portion of the late season Aaron Jones do you think we see? As long as he can stay healthy, he's, he's an RB two with RB one upside. He showed that, you know, week, weeks 15 and on he, he averaged 22 touches and, and over 120 total yards. Like he was a, he was a weekly RB one there. Um, that offense, there's nothing wrong with their offense. I know they got the quarterback downgrade, um, but that offense should still do stuff. Um, you know, you gotta you gotta wonder how much time Aaron, if Aaron Jones's time is coming to an end. So it's health for him. But you know, if you're willing to take on that risk, I like him a lot in Minnesota. I like him an awful lot. The Dallas Cowboys and San Francisco 49ers would tell you he was pretty good on fresh legs, and that was the thing, though. I thought you know, if you're looking at the end of the season, everyone else had been playing the full year, he had not. So uh, so before uh, JSC loses it here, let's go ahead and get your thought on Brock Bowers. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I'll I'll say the wishy washy answer and say landing spot matters. That um, <laughs> you know, yeah, the, um, I mean, so he's calling him a screaming value. Is he a screaming value at tight end nine? Yeah, no, no. I, I mean, not, I don't think that's really. a screaming value. I think that's you know probably people are projecting a little bit on what they saw from last year, and I don't know that he lands in the same ideal spot that we saw Sam Laporta land in. I mean, I think he's going to be good, and I think he like I don't know. Every time I look at him, I feel like he's not all as impressive. He's ten on Best Ball ten, so nine or ten. I don't think he's a value. I think he'll be very good, but I have I feel like we're you know we're chasing Laporta. I think so too. And, um, you know, the thing that always worries me about tight ends coming from college to the NFL is whether they're not a good enough blocker or they're, whether they're too good a blocker that that's what they'll be used for. Um, so, I mean, he's not, he's a good blocker. He's not elite based on, you know, all the tape and all the, the metrics that we've seen. Um, but if he learns quickly how to be one of the best blockers in the league, I think he's George Kittle. Um, who is, you know, a nice comp to be compared to kind of that, you know, playmaking tight end that can, you know, pretty much shed any defender that they throw at him. Um, they've lined him up all over the place, but yeah, it's, it's, it's landing spot for me. And I, like you said, I think he's, I think he's a little bit too <laughs> highly touted right now for a guy who has yet to play a down in the NFL, but I think I your fallbacks, also... your fallbacks are so the, the difference between you know being aggressive with a rookie quarterback or a young up and coming quarterback is there's a lot of quarterbacks you can get as quarterback too who can easily carry you through. I don't think that's the case at tight end. So if you miss on Bowers, that's going to be a little bit of an issue. I don't know that he's going to be a miss, but like not all the rookie tight ends were super great. Like Dalton Kincaid was okay, um, but wasn't like you know is I mean people expected him to be better than Sam Laporte. So. Uh, and Michael Mayer, you know, kind of came up short. So I feel like it's a little bit of a gamble at that point, JSC, but like not without some merit. And maybe, maybe you go more aggressive on tight end. You get one of the steadier guys early or one of the safer plays early, or there are a couple guys going after him. I want to say Dalton Schultz probably going after him. Maybe that's a reasonable, but you'd have to invest pretty close after to get like Dallas Goddard's going a little later, you know, based on, I think the, the, this last season, and maybe he can outdo that a little bit. Uh, uh, there was Steam Waller might retire. He has not. He has not said yet. I mean, I think that they're just waiting for the decision. Was the last I saw, and I think I checked uh, yesterday again uh, just to see if there was anything new on that, and there is not. So, like, I'm kind of <laughs> hoping he does because I don't want to get <laughs> I don't want to get caught up in that again. And the Giants probably hoping he does too. Well, if uh, he does, then you might see Bowers in blue, right? Hey, Jeff, thanks for coming. Hey, Jeff. Uh, Jets, Colts, Bengals, we mean, I guess, for landing spots. They have Mike Gusecki in Cincinnati. They're certainly not investing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> See, Somewhere. that 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 right there is like a microcosm of everything. I mean, you right. know, on the Bengals, that's, that's great. On the Colts, I don't, I don't know. <laughs>
Well, the Colts have too many tight ends. If they limit yeah, it right. to one guy, it might be worthwhile. Uh, and, and I thought this was a good point by John. Yeah. Is, you know, is, I mean, Chandler looked perfectly serviceable, but was he a good in pass protection? No. Or who will he be protecting? That will be the big question. Uh, let's move on to some of the other running back moves that happened here. The Joe Mixon and Zach Moss kind of swap out. Mixon goes to Houston. I think a lot of people are excited about that move. One of the reasons they moved on from Joe Mixon, the Bengals, was because of his explosive run rate. He's way down, uh, way down uh, out on the, the breakaway run rate. Far beyond, and I know we didn't touch on Derrick Henry. Uh, I thought it was surprising. Derrick Henry, sixth last year in breakaway run rate. Uh, according to Pro Football Focus, he had the seventh highest speed in the NFL. Uh, I mean, he's still got some steam. He's in a great spot. I mean, I don't think we want to belabor this. I'll just ask you this quickly. Are, are we seeing – Are we? do you think – should he be going as a tight – as a running back one? He is not right now. He's right outside the running back one range. Is Derrick Henry a little bit lower? Is, I mean, look, I'm happy to take the discount, but I think that's going a little low to me. Oh, that's way too low. He that that to me is that was the home run signing of the of free agency. I think um, right there. I mean, <laughs> he hasn't slowed down at all. We keep waiting for it to happen, and you know it's gonna eventually. But I mean, he's so durable. He's there's <laughs> only mm-hmm. one season that he's played less than 15 games so far. Um, you know now <laughs> now he's on a team that has other elite talent alongside him, including a quarterback who is you know, just as good a runner. I mean, they can't stack the box for him. I mean, I don't know if there is a bigger upgrade at a position other than maybe, you know, cousins at quarterback in Atlanta, than than they made at running back in that thing. I think that turns them into an immediate contender. They were already a contender. You know, they only scored 10 points against the chiefs there. I think this immediately rectifies that despite what they lost on defense and in fantasy, it should be the same. I mean, how is he not going to score double digit touchdowns with another, you know, 12, 1300 yard season there? I I don't think barring injury, it's possible. I would totally agree with that. And I feel like I'm so excited by this. I would like to get up and run a victory lap, but I think that's like stealing from the pot father. So I won't do it. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Loving that. Uh, So, uh, so I I kind of like, it does seem like a cultish thing, right? They love these basketball kind of these athletic pieces at the position. Uh, You know, I think, you know, clearly Bowers is an athletic player, but he's not like an imposing physical specimen. Exactly. I, you know, just like watching him at his workouts, et cetera. So I, look, I'm not, I'm not slogging on Brock Bowers, but I just think I don't want to get too far over my skis on him. Did the Raiders submit their place at last as last in the league and rushing by signing Madison yet? No. Cause they have Samir white. <laughs> and uh, I mean, I think that's the thing about the Jacobs moves that that's ideal to me. He goes to a place where he gets a clear class to workload. Now it's Amir White Zeus. If you haven't seen the pictures of him floating around the Twitter, uh, the shirtless pictures, man, he looks good. <laughs> looks like his upper body looks like AJ Dillon's lower body, except Zeus has a little something yeah. uh, to him. And Antonio Pierce obviously wanted running, wanting to run the ball. I think if Madison's going to be a depth piece there, maybe a little bit of receiving asset. He could. He did catch the ball reasonably well. Uh, but back to Mixon in Houston and Zach Moss now in Cincinnati. Um, <clears throat> what do you think about – I mean, Mixon is going at a reasonable price, running back two kind of range, uh, lower end of running back two range. I feel like that's about right, and maybe you get a little more out of him. Yeah. I mean, I, you brought it up before that his you know his efficiency is, is tanked at this point. But, I mean, um, he's still – you know, he was still RB11 uh, last year. He's – he's kind of that runner that survives on, on sheer volume and on his, on his work in the passing game. And he's not going to lose anything with that going to going to Houston. He's not going to lose anything on, you know, explosive offense or, um, you know, or pass rates that'll, that'll keep him, keep him working there. So I'm perfectly fine taking him where he is. Uh, this is an interesting point. I, I was looking at this the other day. Moss is not going ahead of Chase Brown, but I think that will probably change as we get closer to the season. I know, you know, if you listen to the Bengals beat writers and all the people that cover that team closely, look, Chase Brown had what the second highest speed in the NFL. Check out my notebook from, I think it was last Sunday, this past week. Yes. I write a lot of them. I get confused. Uh, <laughs> but he had the second highest speed only behind DK Metcalf. I had a guys like Tyree Hill and 
all the all the fast guys Chase Brown had on his 54 yard touchdown on a screen pass last year. And he's one of the reasons they wanted to move on from Mixon is to maybe get a little more of him. But he's going like at wide receiver 31, 32 right now. What I'll be watching for is that price to drop a little bit with Moss going, and then maybe I jump in. Yeah, I, I agree there. Um, you know, I mean, I, I think that once people get the get the sense that, you know, or catch on that how poor Moss is in the passing game, <laughs> um, <laughs> how you know, how much how much Chase Brown is going to eat into that. I mean, I think that goes without saying, but you know, people often overreact to that by thinking that he's just going to be, you know, it's kind of like a Jalen Warren, Najee Harris type deal right. for me there where, you know, people got so enamored with Jalen Warren that they really underestimated the right. workload that Harris would continue to get. Um, and then he became the value. So um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm with you there. I want to see Moss drop and then I'll jump. <laughs> So, uh, Mr. Gamers mentioned Samaj P. Ryan had a pretty solid season. I feel like he is going to diminish a bit this year. I think Javante Williams is probably going to, you know, a year, a full year removed from that injury. I feel like this is kind of a rebound year for him. I'm hoping for it. I think you're getting him at a still fair price. Jaleel McLaughlin is going to be a factor, kind of like Chase uh, Brown is in Cincinnati. So, I think those are that's going to be the duo. But, man, P. Ryan will, like, get some – work i mean he's capable and he's a pass blocker capable of the receiver good at the goal line there's plenty to like about him what's to like about austin eckler now that he is a washington commander nothing um let me answer that for you nothing because i was all in on brian robinson it's like <laughs> uh yeah that's a that's a frustrating committee <laughs> right there um you know i mean i i think I, I, given, you know, the fact that he was in the bottom 15th, maybe the bottom 15th percentile in yards after contact per attempt, and he, you know, only three <laughs> qualified running backs ha were worse in missed tackles forced. This is probably one of the better spots that Eckler could have landed um, because, you know, he looks like he'll definitely at least get that passing game role, which which he is is one of the better game better running backs in at but i i don't know that uh, he went in the last best ball i just did he was in the fifth round right. uh, some someone else can have him <laughs> at what, that price what if it was as much the injury as anything else for austin eckler last year do you well, see any side of that yeah but he's so touchdown dependent you know, the last cup, the last couple of years, I mean, he's led the league in, in red zone, red zone, or, you know, end zone in reds inside the five in it for the last, at least two years, it might even be three years. Um, I, I, I don't really want to, to bank on that on top of his age on top of, you know, maybe, maybe he bounces back if he was playing hurt last year, but he, he's got a, he's got a fall in ADP for me to be, for me to be taking him. I mean, I, I looked at fantasy pros earlier and, you know, we just mentioned Zamir white. He's going after Eckler. Yep. No, <laughs> no, Not thank me. you. Not yeah. my house. Uh, Royal played loves Antonio Gibson to new England. I do too. Uh, except for the shares of Ramondre Stevenson that I might've snuck in prior to that move thinking that, Hey, clear path to workload. We got Alex Van Pelt coming in as offense coordinator. Last we saw him was coordinating a Cleveland offense that was very run heavy for the most part. Um, mostly for quarterback related reasons, I believe mm -hmm. might see more of the same in new England, uh, running heavily due to quarterback related reasons. But I do think Gibson needed a change of scenery. Uh, the new James white, we shall see Royal Slade watches those things closely. He might know we got about 10 minutes left, uh, with Jamie. So if you have some more questions, go ahead and get them in now and I'll make sure we hit them before we get out of here. In the meantime, we'll look at some of the moves. So, so we, we saw Mike Evans, Mike Michael Pittman. Mike Evans got a new deal. Seems reasonable. He sticks around with Baker Mayfield. Uh, that seems like the best possible outcome for both of them. Liam Cohen comes in the offense coordinator, someone that Baker's comfortable with and has had some had a little bit of success with. Uh, Michael Pittman Jr. gets a three-year deal with the Colts. He will stick around. I like that move as well. T. Higgins uh, likely to remain with the Bengals. Uh, do you feel like he could be a true wide receiver one somewhere else, or is this the best spot for him? Um, I mean, 
there's I guess there's a handful of I, I was you know the Chiefs were f- a fun thing to a fun team to project until they signed Marquise Brown there for for him I think you know that would have been you know with his air yard share um, which is thirty seven percent right last year I think that would have been fun for him there but you know I don't know at th- at this point it doesn't seem unless I'm missing some glaring one there that there's any explosive offense that is looking for a wide receiver one like that, where he would flourish as that guy there. Um, you know, maybe, I mean, I, I, I kind of banged the drum on him to the giants for a little while there, but you know, they spent those draft picks on Brian Burns, which I was happier about than getting T Higgins. Um, so no, I, I think, I think for what he is and for what he brings to the offensive table, he's, he's probably best suited where he is. Uh, Gus Edwards, by the way, I kind of passed over him, goes back to his old offensive coordinator from Baltimore. He had a great deal of success under him in Los Angeles. I think he's in a good spot. Uh, Gus Edwards greater in LA, in LA than Singletary is in New York. And, uh, you know, we think Scammer says both those are going to help him win in his main dynasty. But I, I like the Edwards there. I think that's a pretty good move. Although I feel like this is probably likely as well. <laughs> I, I do like Edwards there, but I mean, you, you're kidding yourself if you think he's getting 270 touches there because he's the main guy. I mean, I I, I got to figure, you know, they have to draft a running back, right, in, in the Chargers? I think I so mean, at some you, point. I think, you know, I thought Bowers might make sense to them at five, and, and maybe yeah. then JSC's number might be I feel, might feel a little better about, especially given the dearth of receiving – depth they have yeah. right now but they got to go wide receiver too as well now that they moved off from both Allen and Williams so I don't know that's probably shifted more to wide receiver need than a, a tight end need mm-hmm. we'll see uh Sniper Bell wants to know picking Puka Nakua in a round two on a 12 person league I feel like that's a value I'm not seeing a ton of Puka Nakua landing in round two if he's there I'd be happily taking it I haven't seen him go to round two yet <laughs> yeah it's just like uh you know I would love to see a Chargers trade with Minnesota. Oh, Justin Jefferson. A lot of Justin Jefferson talk. Could you see a universe in which the Minnesota Vikings, I mean, like you want to say nothing would surprise me. I think that would surprise me. Yeah. I think you're talking about just the pick though, right? What? Oh. The uh, draft pick, moving up to number five to get their quarterback. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. I could see it. I could see that happening. Although I don't have. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know if the Chargers are in a position where they want to do that right now. That, that's that been the talk, you know, of this thing that as soon as the, the Vikings made that deal, you know, the speculation started flying to three, to five, to four even. You know, if if, if Arizona was willing to pass on Marvin Harrison there. I think they are not. I don't, I don't see any of the top five teams wanting to move. You know, I mean, it seems like a cl- they have all have clear cut needs. The top three need quarterbacks, the four and five need wide receivers and, and the best players right. available are at those positions for them. So but I think getting uh, the 11 into 23 at least makes it appealing. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think that that does look appealing and they would get JJ McCarthy is I'm pretty sure. Although I've heard, you know, I've heard some other thoughts mentioned. I think McCarthy would be their guy. I think a lot of teams want McCarthy. I know Cecil Lammy, uh, my colleague at Football Guys is convinced that if he lasts until when Denver is drafting, that they will absolutely take him. I think the Vikings, he's a good fit for that scheme as well, although I've heard they like Bo Nix as well. I don't know. That seems like a little bit of a reach. Oh, look at Eric Romox here. Eric. My golly. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes, the Arizona shirt is the only team I know. That's my tourney pick because I don't know anything else about college basketball other than my hometown Wildcats. <laughs> And um, by the way, Mel, yes, take him at the tail end of round one or the second half of round one. I think it's where I see him going. Michael Kubiak mm-hmm. in the house with a great bear down. Yes. I'll, I'll sing the damn fight song if you're not careful. People. <laughs> bear down. Uh, so, all right. So I think we've hit other follow the questions. Was there anything else? I, like the Jerry Judy thing I thought was interesting. That's a lot of money. It's apparently wide receivers are, are very popular. But it's him getting, what was it, three years, 51 million I feel like that's like such, I mean, like if he really came in and delivered, maybe they get that. That's like you're paying for the best case scenario, correct? Yeah. Um, And I answered a question today of who I would rather have in 2024 between 
Jude, uh, Judy and Gabe Davis, and I picked Gabe Davis. So, you know, I mean, Judy is going to need utterly elite play from Deshaun Watson, I think, to, you know, to, to have me <laughs> um, look his way as someone to say, like, wow, I was really wrong about him there. Um, yeah. So. And- I think he was on the final year of his contract. Cooper is on the final year of his contract. Elijah Moore on the final year of his contract. Possible trade bait, maybe so. Thanks for coming, Andrea. Thanks. Appreciate everyone who came tonight. Uh, one last one here. Sam Darnold. Let's say the let's say the the quarterback situation doesn't work out in Minnesota. Sam Darnold is he is he, like I know we are we all think of the seeing ghosts thing and. And all that is—is is there a chance that a Baker Mayfield like redemption here for Sam Darnold if the circumstances work out right? Yeah, well, I mean, why not? He—he, he, you know, I've—I've I've talked about this a few times. Um, you know, this is kind of like what do they call it—the the, like the competitive rebuild where they're right. kind of starting over, but they're also got the pieces to you know to be there. I mean, the, the last time Darnold was a starter, he was good. You know, um, he his completion rate over expected. Um, I think it was twenty twenty one, was it? Maybe twenty twenty two. I mean, it was top ten. Twenty two. Twenty two. Yeah, with with uh, with Carolina. Yep. You know, he he was he was top ten that year in that. He's got Kevin O'Connell preaches passing first, and he's got so many people to pass to. It's it is seems to me almost exactly like the Baker Mayfield situation. I don't know if he's going to wind up, go there and, you know, lead him to a playoff right. spot right. and get, get paid a, <laughs> a three year, hundred million dollar deal as a result. But yeah, no, I think, I don't think the, the Minnesota offense is going to be bad. I think he's a serviceable QB two, someone I'd happily take as a backup or as a QB two in a super flex or something like that. Um, I don't think Jefferson's going to miss much of a beat with him either. You know, he's he didn't miss much he's... of a beat with Dobbs, Mullins, and yeah. all last year, right? Like, and he and he pointed that out. And and Scampers, I'm kind of with you. I believe in Kevin O'Connell too. I think uh, I think he's got it right. And 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 young Kubiak also uh, a Vikings fan, so he's hoping <laughs> for the best. I can assure you that. Uh, all right, Jamie, I'll let you get out of here. I know it's been a long day for you. I appreciate you coming. Uh, loved having you on. We will do it again. Also have you on the radio show. Catch Jamie at Fantasy Team Advice. He's talking basketball. Eric Romoff's out there at Green Schemes Media talking uh, basketball as well. So get your call and boot fix. I might actually see a game. I don't know. When does this whole thing start? Tomorrow. Noon. Tomorrow. Oh, yeah. look at it. Look at Scampers. I'd rather have Darnold than any pass. <laughs> yeah, uh, a little, zing, a little, zinger, fired. little zinger on the way out. Shots there. fired at Royal <laughs> Slade by Mr. Scampers. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Appreciate y'all coming. Appreciate everyone showing up. Catch me, Sirius XM Fantasy Sports Radio, this Saturday at 3 p.m. Um, Mike Dempsey and myself will continue covering the teams. I'll also be here at noon Saturday for an actual live stream with a plan that I can do a little kick-ass uh, discussion here. We'll take lots of questions. JSC, you can give me all you want Saturday noon Eastern time. Uh, and then the football diehards later, my football diehards, football guys call them. Ah. Uh, we'll be out on Sunday as usual. Fantasy Notebook, I have lots of stuff. Lots of instant reactions there. We've been writing up myself, Ryan Weiss, Hutch, uh, Hutchinson Brown. have been writing up those instant reactions. So check that out. Tons of great stuff over at footballguys.com. Check it out, people. We'll see you next time, Saturday at noon Eastern time. Bye now.